All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another episode here at the Filipino American Woman Project. I am your creator and co-host, Jen Amos. And as always, I have my amazing community manager, writer, super mom, and co-host Nani Dominguez. <laughs> Nani, welcome back. We have another bonus episode here at the Filipino American Woman Project. Yes, I love this like bio you've created for me. I'm gonna like <laughs> write this down and use it. <laughs> I just came up with it like five minutes ago. <laughs> I know, I know. And it's the second time you've repeated it. So now I'm like, okay, yeah. that's sounding good. <laughs> well, you know, if I just keep saying my amazing co-host, like I feel like it sort of desensitizes the yeah, title. So I thought, totally. well, let me just get a little shake creative. It up a little bit. Let's yeah, be more yeah, specific. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, here at the TFA project, we're always trying to like rename our titles for yes. our resumes. And I'm like, okay, well, yeah. one day she said she's a writer, so I'm gonna put down writer. But you I are also change the <laughs> title on LinkedIn like every three seconds. And like I gave <laughs> yeah. myself this title. Hope that's a, yeah. all right. <laughs> but also you are a budding, a budding, that's the word budding. Oh. SEO writer right now. Oh, yes. SEO yes, meaning search engine optimization. So yes, I know yes, you've been I learning am. a little bit about it lately and uh, our listeners may see this in the background, but Jeremy is giving a thumbs up. We do have an audience with us today. Oh, yeah. So Nani, quick thoughts about what it's been like for you to learn SEO writing so far. Well, I have to give kudos to you first and foremost for pointing me in the direction of learning about the SEO world because you would think that as a blogger of umpteen years that I would, you know, be familiar with something like that. But I don't really, that's not really the vibe of my blog if you've ever visited it. <laughs> so that's not been my style of writing, which I am now interested in changing. And so you directed me to some really cool resources where I was able to learn and also reminded me that we have Jeremy who just disappeared um, for some odd reason, who is <laughs> also here. <laughs> oh, he's here? Yeah, he's sort of there. He's trying to use his data to be on the laptop, but he's there. <laughs> yeah, oh. he just gave a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, yeah. See, there he is in the chat. That is exactly what I was going to say next, Jeremy, is I need some like one-on-one -on -one lessons or some like personalized training in SEO to expand on the videos that I learned. But yes, that is my new venture of the season <laughs> right now in yeah. my writing career. Yes, absolutely. I can't really tell you what I'm learning nowadays because I feel like I'm always learning everything at once. So. I'm just really here to learn from our guest, which is what I'm always excited to do, which before we actually let me go ahead and take a second here to introduce our guest today. We are super, super excited because this year we have another intern from the Bolosan Center, not only helping us here at the Tifa Project, but we are super excited because this episode is to kick off the month of May, which is known as the Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. And to kick off this month with us, we have an intern at the Bolosan Center who also happens to be an intern for us at the Tifa Project, Paulette Imperial. And so Paulette, welcome. Welcome to our show. Donnie and I were talking like offline about like, you know, who could we bring on for this month other than Stacy? <laughs> and we thought, oh my gosh, let's bring Paulette. So Paulette, welcome. Welcome to the Filipino American Woman Project. Oh, hello. Thank you for inviting me. I'm sorry. I'm like shy. <laughs> but it's I'm excited good. to be here. I'm like, I'm a fan of the podcast. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Yes. We're so happy to have you. And uh, before we really dive into our conversation today, I want to go ahead and give everyone a quick announcement. Nani and I talked about this in our co-host meeting before we started recording. We are having our next book club for Chismas with Jen and Nani. We finally talked about it. We've been putting it off like, like no joke. We've actually been putting it off for a couple of weeks because we're like, well, let's finish the book first and then we'll set the, day, the date. But we haven't like finished the book yet. So we're like, yeah. let's just set the date. And then we'll force ourselves to finish the book. So with that being said, <laughs> work that backwards, being said, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Talk about start procrastination. With the end. <laughs> yeah. Start with the end in mind, right? So that's that's kind of my I wouldn't say that's my philosophy, but maybe it's part of it. So our next book club is gonna take place on Tuesday, May 10th at let me figure out the time zones here. We have we wait, let me look this up real quick. All right. So our next book club to our listeners, go ahead and put this on your calendar. We are going to hold it on Tuesday, May 10th at 5 p.m. Uh, at 5 p.m. Eastern time. That's 2 p.m. Pacific time and 4 p.m. Central time. And I think I think that's what time is that? That's like I have to figure out all the time zones. I think it's like 3 p.m. Mountain time. Oh, my gosh. There's like so many time zones that we're dealing with nowadays. But basically, um, what we're going to be doing for the Chismas with Jen and Nani book club on May 10th at 5 p.m. Eastern time, 
is we're going to be finishing the book Little Manila is in the Heart by Don Mabalon. And so here's the thing. You don't have to read the book to be part of this book club. We would just very much love to have you there. The book is sort of an excuse to hang out with us. Um, of course, obviously, if you do read the book, we are going to be talking about the book. Oh, I, I thought I would ask you, have you read Little Manila is in the Heart by Don Mabalon? I have not, but I have it on my like iBooks. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. No pressure. <laughs> Yeah. Didn't mean to put you on the spot like that. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so we are going to be having the book club, like I said, on Tuesday, May 10th, 5 p.m. Eastern time. And of course, we'll have all the different time zones, like 2 p.m. Pacific time in the show notes for you all to get involved with. And really, um, if you already didn't buy us a cup of boba on biasboba.com, you can go ahead and support us at biasboba.com. And that'll be your invitation to joining us in the book club. Nani and Hero, any thoughts yes. <laughs> that you want to share about the book club? I am just excited to get back on track with the book club because honestly, I think all of us have been so busy since the last time we recorded and it was such a big event the last time we reviewed the part two of the book that, yeah, to be honest with you, I couldn't find the book for a long time. So I have a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> Lovely. Yes. <laughs> and this is why I have everything on Kindle. <laughs> so yeah, that things. would probably be smart. Cool. Cool. Well, there you have it. Like I said, Tuesday, May 10th at 2 p.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. Eastern time. I'm really referring to the time zones that Nani and I live in. Oh, um, everything actually, in between. Sorry, sidebar. Um, yeah. Now that you say that out loud, I'm not going to be here May 10th. We're going to be on our honeymoon. So we're probably going to have to reschedule that. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> well, okay. So, Dennis, it's yeah, okay. You can sorry, keep this. Actually, we just found out. <laughs> We just found out that we're going to reschedule, <laughs> but y'all can like just ping us if you want to know when it's coming up. So hopefully we'll do it sometime in May. Yes. Either way to celebrate Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Month. With that being said, obviously we do have a book club in the horizon. So feel free to stay in touch and um, join us in our new Discord community, which you can get in the show notes here of this episode where you can get the latest updates about the book club, or obviously we have our newsletter, or you can text us at our Google Voice number 415-484-8329. Just lots of ways to get a hold of us nowadays. I'm pretty proud of us, Nani. I know. We make <laughs> it so easy. Trying to make so ourselves easy. really accessible. <laughs> yeah, we make it too easy. Um, without further ado, uh, Paulette, we're going to go ahead and turn it over to you. We're really excited to have you here today. Why don't we start with you opening up? How did you hear about the Filipino American Woman Project? <laughs> I think it was during the beginning of the pandemic. That was when I was a junior in high school. So that was wow. kind of like. <laughs> That's amazing. It was, it was like the toughest year too. So it was like difficult, like adjusting. And like, but the previous semester, I had like a really tough time with like personal matters and also with academics. So I wanted to like find something where it would like, be like a niche hobby to like I guess like find myself more or like I don't know how to word this like I decided to like follow a bunch of like Filipino accounts because that was like what I would spend my time procrastinating on like oh I want to read about like so and so like Filipino American or Filipino public figure and then like through there I would learn or like I would just read like little niche articles and I also wanted to like get more into like Philippine history so I followed Anang Stacy on Instagram and then through her I like found you guys on Spotify as well, like Clarissa and Suki. So I started listening through there and I was like, wow, I resonate a lot with the stories. And then I joined the Bulosan Center last semester because I really like doing history and I don't know. I wanted to like like how do I say this? Like go into different because initially I was like going into like pre-med stuff but I learned like I'm not really interested in that so let me go into like Asian American studies or Philippine history or like Asian studies and then like I really like the narratives that were like shared through like the stories of like the guests because it was like a lot of them were like migrated like I know you mentioned that like you had like difficulty with like what generation am I and like I also had a similar story where when I joined Oh, that's also another thing. I, through Ron and Stacey, I joined the Bula Center and I started interning for you guys, but also I joined like an Ilocano learning program at, called Laing and they taught Ilocano. And 
through there, I learned like the history of like specifically Ilocanos in Hawaii, Hawaii, like the Sakata workers. But then I also learned about like the history with the trade off with labor workers going back and forth. Oh, I don't know if I worded that right, but that's how like I got my interest or like that's how I found out. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, thank you so much for sharing. And we have Clarissa here who actually wants to learn more about her Ilocano roots. So I'm sure that you two will probably be <laughs> uh, connecting afterwards. Mm-hmm. Clarissa is one of our audience members here on our show right now and uh, also as part of our Discord channel. So actually, Clarissa, if you don't mind me dragging you in here, do you have any <laughs> any thoughts you want to <laughs> say about actually what compelled you to join us? Because I know you wanted to, you know, learn the Ilocano language specifically and, and kind of how that drew you into uh, joining our community. Yeah, well, like Paulette said, I, I found you guys through trying to search through my Ilocano roots or trying to get that connection. And in finding that connection, I, I found you ladies and that kind of broadened my horizons and kind of helped me find even more of a connection to my Filipino-ness and Panayan-ness, I guess you can say. Did I well, well thank you for letting me drag you in. <laughs> <laughs> and have you talk for a second. This is this is actually like really cool because we've never done a show like a live show where we have like audience members in the background. So I'm like, oh, let me just pull some people up here. <laughs> so so thank you, Clarissa, for letting me do that to you. And also thank you for being no part of our problem. Discord community. Glad I can be here. <laughs> cool, cool. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Nani now. And if Hero allows, see if you have any thoughts you'd like to share. <laughs> Yeah, I'm like, did you say me? <laughs> I could not hear for a second. And yes, he definitely looks like he wants to fight Jeremy. <laughs> that was so funny. Uh, I don't know why he's making these faces and doing this movement, but <laughs> yes. Anyway, he's distracting me, if you couldn't tell. What was the question? <laughs> oh, well, the question was, and it's okay if you can't answer it, we can just like move forward. But I wanted to see if you had any opening thoughts for anything that uh, Paulette had shared. Oh, yeah. I mean, I just think it's such a rare opportunity for us to connect with someone who is actually interested in uh, genealogy, I think you call it, and like learning about the different like political dynasties and how they're intertwined and how that kind of connects to like the candidates that are running today because the Philippine presidential elections 2022 is on um, actually the day I'm getting married, May 9th, (laughs) and that's coming up quick. So, People, you know, I think are really interested in learning about the candidates as the whole political mess of a landscape that has been going on over there for decades and decades. I think it's really helpful for us to have a resource in our community, such as Paula, who can, you know, share some of that independent study and provide some context on the candidates that are running for 2022 president. Um, because yeah, it's, it's interesting to be able to follow that narrative in real time and see kind of how technology and social media and the rise of like citizen journalism is, has really become very important in the Philippines as dangerous as it is. It's become incredibly important and it's good to have someone here who can kind of dive into the controversy of that, I guess you should say in a way that's like, you know, meaty and factual and historical and informed. So thank you, Paulette. Yes. And just so you all know, if you've been curious to know, like, why we have this whole uh, political section in our newsletter now, and on biasboba.com, it's all thanks to Paulette. So Paulette, just thank you for your contribution to our show so far. And that is why we thought, hey, who better to help kick us off like AAPI Heritage Month than Paulette? <laughs> so so thank you for doing that. And thank you for joining us. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go ahead and move forward. And, you know, with the Filipino American Woman Project, I always ask it to every person that comes on the show. And I want to explain why. So often we have we have our listeners or or people reach out and say, hey, how come you're not interviewing so and so? How come you're not interviewing so and so? Oh, there's so and so that you should interview. And my take on it is I want to interview people who self identify as Filipino American women or a Filipino American woman. Like, I don't want to like go out of my way and say, hey, are you Filipino? Because that's a very sensitive question for all of us to say, hey, are you Filipino? Hey, are you Asian? Hey, are you, you know, fill in the blank? And so it's really important for us to ask this question or to have people self-identify and to come to come on and tell their story because in telling their story and why they identify 
we get to be able to hear a little bit about their own family history. And so with that said, Paulette, you obviously are on the Filipino American Woman Project show. Tell us a little bit about your family history and why you identify as a Filipino American woman. Hmm. That's a tough question. I was like trying to prepare for like what I should say, but I was like, I don't know how to like start it off. But so, oh, I'm a, I guess I'm like, I guess I identify as a first generation Filipino American. Both of my parents were born and raised in Alangapo City, which is like near the Subic Naval Base. My grandpa, and I've had a family, like a lot of family members that have worked on the Subic Naval Base. And through there, that's how we like arrived to the United States. Like my grandma petitioned my dad, and then he brought over my mom and my older brother. And then I was born after that, a little bit after that. So I've always, or I've grown up in the East Bay. Or I was born and raised in the East Bay and I still live here. So, well, there's like a Filipino community here or there's like, it's a little bit more diverse here. Like there's a lot of Filipinos in the city I live in. And so I guess it was a little bit like easier for me to like ease my way into like understanding like what was happening because a lot of my aunts and uncles were like living around me. And so I could like talk to them about it or about their upbringing and a lot of my friends were Filipino. So I could talk to them about that as well. But yeah, my dad's a machinist. And I remember like I was reading like the articles that was published by the Blossom Center about interviewing you guys and like your guys is like grandpa and your father's history as like working this like the naval base. And I was like, man, like I could relate with that because it's like I also like talked to my dad a lot with like Philippine politics because I know like there were several guests that like mentioned like they migrated here before or during martial law. And like that was like my parents still lived in the Philippines during martial law. So like during that time, my dad was like he had this like anti-Marco sentiment, which is which is like normal. But I like just through his like little niche discussions on Philippine politics and how like how like their wealth has been illegally accumulated and like through their cronyism I wanted to learn and do more research with it so I decided to like look up the people and like I learned like through like these random blog sites like the Filipino genealogy project it's a blog that documents a lot of the historical public figures and how they're like all intertwined like the upper social class how they're all like incredibly just related and like regardless of their status I realized like oh they're always going to be like comfortable and like I don't know if what I said made sense but through there I like made me realize oh wow the corruption's still like very lively and um, alive and kicking apparent. yeah and happening in front of our eyes that that really reminds me of like a past conversation we had with Melody Agbisit, who is a friend of mine here locally in Virginia. And she talked about how um, if you actually trace back the money here in Virginia Beach, it'll like it goes back to like super old money all the way back to the colonials. And in a way, it gets me to think about even the Philippines, like how, like you're saying, if you trace it back, if you trace the money back or like the lineage back, it's like all of these politicians are, they they like all know each other one way or the other. And uh, even though maybe on the surface, like in front of the public eye, it seems like they're competing for, you know, to, to, to get a seat in, I don't know the right verbiage, to get in the seat in, you know, somewhere up there in politics, like they all really know each other and it's all really a chess game for all of them. Or, you know, maybe just putting on the show when in reality they're all helping each other out in their own way behind the scenes. Like there's so much more that we don't know is what I'm gathering than what meets the public eye. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. There's like so many, this is such a bad hobby because sometimes I just spend like my days like reading about, oh, like Britain and Marcos, he, prior to marrying Imelda, he had like a first wife and like, apparently they like, like Imelda was mad about that. And so any remnant of her, they like, pushed off and then I was also reading about like his like his affairs like on um, one of his affairs he was known for having an affair with Dobie Beams she was an American actress but then she also had an affair with Playboy model an Australian Playboy model and they still live super comfortably in Australia and she's like apparently she owns a holding company but it's linked to like the Swiss oh <laughs> bank God, accounts he has mm -hmm. and it's like the fact that like they still live they still have like access to all of this and like it's like the amount of money that he has 
and like how he's able to like cheat his way with like the Kamalek, which is the commission of elections in the Philippines and how he's able to, how he's able to have like several like political alliances or like even business alliances with like the oligarchs or like Philippine oligarchs. That's something that like was like crazy to me. And it's like, it's like people like them who don't realize what they're doing wrong. It's the reason why we have so many like problems within the Philippines. It's like with poverty, with sex tourism, with with OFWs and our communities abroad. Like it's like these families that like live comfortably and that have a disregard for the Filipinos that are having to like be sent to do the hard things that they the working class. aren't seeing yeah. happening. Mm-hmm. And I was just like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, it's scary to think how like, so like a handful of families or companies or organizations control the entire nation. And even that is tucked <laughs> under the wing of America. You know what I mean? Like, it's scary when you get into the details of it and you see why even having conversations like this on public platforms is dangerous. Like the rules are different over there. <laughs> I'm curious to know, you know, Paulette, because, you know, my my intent in this moment is to make it about you as much as I, I love you talking about politics. I am curious to know what has learning about politics in the Philippines taught you about yourself? Like, ha- have you kind of gleaned anything from this whole going down the rabbit hole and like following all of these politicians and their family history and, and all that? Like, have you like really learned something about yourself in the process? Mm-hmm. Oh, the thing that like really kickstarted my interest in like Philippine history was when I received like there was a book that like a distant relative of mine published oh I've always been interested in Philippine history because of my dad but I got more into it because of like my interest in genealogy and I was interested in reading about political dynasties because through my dad's side I'm not my family, like not like my generation, but like distant relatives and my like paternal, deep paternal ancestors, they were in politics. They were considered like the oldest political dynasty in Bicol. And I got a book about it and I like was reading about it. And then when I was reading about like other political families, I was like, hmm, they all have like the similar like during like the Philippine American War, instead of like fighting and staying to like defend their people, they went away to Manila and then back. And I was just like, man, like they're not even like protecting their provinces. So it's like, it's the same thing that's happening now. It's like, but I'm like on the other end of it because like my relatives are from Zambales and then they moved to Alangapo and I was like, oh shit, like I like don't identify with it, but then it's like I'm able to see like this like landscape of like people who still benefit from having so much power in like some in like one region. And it was just like eye opening for me. And it was just like seeing this contrast of how like Filipinos, like how different the journeys can be and how like they still take advantage of it. And it's like obviously like with like my family working, like I've had besides like that distant connection through like my last name. I also like was like looking in like the other parts of my history. So like through like my mom's side, I like I think I mentioned this earlier, or I was like my great great grandfather was a cicada worker in Hawaii. And then I also have like my great grandfather worked in Guam. And then I have like relatives that worked in Saudi, like my grandpa, and like just having all of these stories of like, man, like it just made me frustrated because it's like it kind of like I hated the narrative where it's like Filipinos where like we have to work abroad in order to find a stable life or we have to find a livelihood. But it's like we do now because there's a big there's like it's such a deep history with like America and the Philippines. But like I wish that politicians would also like take into accountability, like looking at like their other connections. I was like, they're like kind of like bystanders to what was happening within it. And like me having like, oh, I mentioned this in our previous call or like when we first met, even though like my last name's Imperial, it's like I have like such a like weird connection to like my surname because it's like 
I'm also like a product of US imperialism. It's like, I love it, but I also like hate it too. Cause it's like, I don't know whether it's just a weird word. Yeah. And I don't know. It's almost like a, <laughs> it's almost like you've been, uh, what's the word given this responsibility to know this history because of your last name, you know, mm-hmm. like, in I don't know if that's obviously true or anything. I, I can't say I'm not God here, but <laughs> it's just, you know, that, that's sort of what comes to mind. It's like, maybe the reason why you have your last name is, is because of, you know, to know, to, to, to actually like have the curiosity to know this kind of knowledge and even share it with us today. Yeah. I think it's also just ironic, you know, the, the mm-hmm. name with like your actual sentiment towards imperialism <laughs> for lack of a better description. But yeah, I think it's kind of like you could use that as a very like niche angle, I guess, for your studies. <laughs> yeah. Actually, it's interesting that we're having this conversation because, uh, as I mentioned on the show, this is like really the first show that we've done where we actually have an audience. And so one of our audience members with us today actually happens to be a super active member in our Discord community. So we have Suki here with us. Suki, welcome to the Filipino American Women Project. I know, you only, I know you've only been listening for the last two, three weeks. And look at this. Now you're on the show. <laughs> any any uh, quick thoughts you want to share for being on the show after two weeks of listening to it? <laughs> <laughs> only just that I'm excited to listen to more because of how good the content's been. But I've been listening to episodes with titles that catch my interest and I'll click on them out of order. And then I'm realizing sometimes that you guys bring up things that I'm not familiar with because I didn't listen to those episodes. But that's what's exciting about it. Like I have this like wealth of knowledge and a Filipino community to look forward to listen to like on my mornings when I'm just like making coffee and getting up out of bed. So I, yeah. Um, and this is what, this is one of the reasons why I'm excited about this podcast. Cause I get to suddenly be part of this live learning about <laughs> imperialism and that uh, uh, last name is actually imperial. <laughs> <laughs> what, do yeah, you know? what do you know? <laughs> I thought that was yeah. just like, well, you know, Suki, thing. I'm covering this topic. Imperialism. <laughs> Yeah, Ooh, my last name um, is actually imperial. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, I know it's it's wild. It's a very wild conversation. Um, so like uh, yeah. Suki is one of yeah, like I mentioned, she is actively she's new to our community, but that doesn't stop us from bringing her onto the show because her and Jeremy have been crazy active in our Discord community, and um, we had mentioned this in our last uh, in our last bonus episode. But anyone can join our Discord community. So. If you're listening to this and you're like, oh my gosh, I want to be a part of the next like, you know, recording where I could be part of the audience, like check out the show notes, join us on Discord. You never know, you might get an invitation to join us. So Suki, you were commenting a little bit on on what uh, Paulette has shared. And so I was curious if you want to share some of the things that you mentioned. And then Paulette, I'd love to get your thoughts on what Suki is about to share. So Suki? So Paulette had mentioned about how like politicians are so connected with each other. And then like Jeremy commented on how that connected with the U.S. involvement with politics in the Philippines. And from what I could gather, because I'm not a historian myself, which is why I'm here in the first place to listen to Paulette. Like from what I can gather, like the U.S. has such a strong Western influence on the Philippines, pre-colonial, post-colonial. It's just like I've noticed that even my birth sister has a hard time getting her five-year-old daughter interested in their own native language. like. Little little Keith will per, she prefers to talk English because that's what she's seeing on TV or on her iPad or learning. She's learning songs in English, so like in a way, her English is better than my own American five year old other niece. Her English is so good because that's like that's their priority. It just seems to be the goal for a lot of Filipinos to want to integrate or marry into a wealthy American family because of the opportunities that America has presented in the past and present and future, I guess. So like, I just thought that was important. And I'm glad that Paula is reviewing that here. It just really goes to show how far back white privilege and colonialism, imperialism affects other cultures, like, you know, along with our own culture. But like, the US really influences every aspect in the Philippines, like, their clothes, their their songs, their religion, especially, of course, our historical involvement in the wars with the U.S. or not with the U.S., but like alliance with the U.S. That's just what I've gathered from 
my whole life just watching what yeah little, yeah I don't know what to say after that it's wild well, and beautiful thank you for sharing to learn <laughs> Yeah. yeah, thank you for sharing that. There's a lot to learn as you continue to listen to the older episodes. And hopefully it's helpful. Like when we talk about something, you know, if I remember uh, something that we talked about from a previous interview, I'll mention it and Jen will try and go find it so that you can listen to that. So hopefully that's helpful. But you will find as you do that, that we have talked in great, great detail about this American influence, the American colonial project in the Philippines and how a big part of that was the United States deploying what they called the Thomasites, who were like, you know, white women teachers that were deployed to the Philippines to teach kids about American culture and basically instill in them that like, American is the way like this is you want to be American, otherwise you're nothing. And you know, that's where this whole idea of like the self loathing Filipino comes from. We have talked about this in great deal detail. I think it was with Michelle Whirl, who just joined Discord, our Discord channel, right. that we talked about her cousin in the Philippines who was asking her to help her with her homework or something one day. And it was like learning the alphabet. And they say A is for apple, but apples don't even grow in the Philippines. They don't have apples in the Philippines. So oh, know, I think even- that was um I think that was with oh yeah, I think that was with um Wait, let me say it again. I think that was with April. Well, one of okay, the Okay, one of so the Whirl sisters. <laughs> yeah. So quick quick shout out to the Whirls. We have April Whirl, who is with us in episode 94. You're Asian American in a white space. Do you even know what discrimination is? Unpacking the intersectional experience of being a mixed Panay with April Whirl. So that's episode 194. And then you have her sister join us, episode 109, Michelle Whirl, which is don't let others or the color of your skin get in the way of proudly identifying as Filipino. Biracial identity crises, long distance relationships, and being raised by single Filipino moms with Michelle Whirl. So shout out to the Whirls. I'm going to have to ping uh, Michelle later and let her know. Yeah, we, we can give her shout out on this episode. Discord now that she's there. Yeah, yeah. We'll bug her later. <laughs> anyway, sorry, let's let's get back in. So where were we at? I lost my train of thought. Um, we were talking about the extent of imperialism and the American influence in the Philippines and how, like Paulette was kind of describing in her journey of learning about all these political dynasties and the history, that it's still very much alive and kicking today. And it hasn't mm-hmm. gone anywhere. It just looks different now. You know, it's normalized in a different way so that it kind of flies by the radar for most people, unless you're someone who takes a particular interest in learning about it and digging up the resources to learn, because then that's the second wall that you run into is like a lack of accessibility to those types of things, which is again, why it's so just special for us to, to have Paulette here and for her to have agreed to come on and like share some knowledge with us. And if you guys haven't already If you're not subscribed to our newsletter, I have put two pieces that she did for us on this specific presidential 2022 Philippines election coming up on May 9th. We did do a candidate overview and then a historical kind of deep dive on biasboba.com that you can check that out if you haven't uh, already seen that in the newsletters. Yes. So uh, Suki, again, thank you for your thoughts. And Paulette, just want to see if you had any follow up responses to anything we've been talking about so far. Oh, like going back to what Suki said about like how like they're integrating English more into the curriculum in the Philippines. I was like kind of astonished when I was like talking to my cousin. She's like she's two years older than me. She was talking to me how she doesn't know how to speak. Well, this is like not English, but it's like she only learned Tagalog. Because even though she lives in La Union, which is in the Ilocos region, which is, it was crazy that she didn't know how to speak Ilocano, even though she lived in Ilocandia, because it was like, like, why is this? And then she only learned how to speak it while she was in college, because it was only a requirement in college and not in, it was just crazy to me how even it's like also with English, it the Philippines is also slowly becoming very Tagalog centric as well, because like, it kind of explains it because it's like the lingua franca for how to like, so that like different regions of the Philippines can communicate with one another. If you're from like s- this region, you could still speak to this person. But it's not like the differences within the languages aren't too crazy, but it's just crazy because that's like one way that we're kind of erasing our like c- 
connection to our like roots is through like the loss of the language as well and like also like it reminds me of how like there's a lot of like discourse with like filipino americans or with like filipino in the diaspora like i don't know how to speak this language but it doesn't mean like i'm any less filipino and it's like that's so true because it's like they weren't at fault for not learning it it's like first of all like we don't have like the same type of resources or like the same type of class options with learning tagalog or filipino in like our high school curriculum and i think there's like a group of like filipino scholars and historians that are trying to like i know manong stacy mentioned that she was trying like there's a group of scholars with like dr robin rodriguez and then with dr lily and villa raza they're like a team of like scholars and other filipino scholars they're trying to make it a requirement to learn like ethnic studies or like and they're also trying to push for like Philippine American like history with it too. So like hopefully like we'll be able to get there one day and hopefully like we'll have more resources so that Filipinos can connect with their culture because language is super important. Or that's how I see it. Cause like like I was so ashamed that I didn't know how to like I was talking to my cousins. They were like born in the eighties and nineties. I'm like the youngest one on my dad's side and like on my mom's side, most of them live in the Philippines. And then like, I'm the only one that was born here on my mom's side. But then on my dad's side, like most of them like live in the United States. They're a little bit older and they didn't have like as much resources to connect back to the Philippines. So like when I was like telling them, oh yeah, like they didn't speak Tagalog. Like our ancestors didn't speak Tagalog because my family's from the Ilocos and Zambala. So they spoke Zambal and Ilocano. And there was like, oh, and like, I was like, that's like one thing that we need to like, Hmm. like point out more or like we need to celebrate well not to like regionalism is bad but hopefully like we like learn to also like embrace our roots and not like uniform it or yeah <laughs> yeah we're not a monolith and just because you're filipino you can't i think contribute to the narrative that all filipinos speak tagalog like you know i have a friend who her family uh she's not close to them she doesn't know anyone you know like she's very far removed from her filipino family but they were ilocano and she was saying i want to learn tagalog just because it's like grasping at straws you know what i mean it's the the most accessible thing to me and even that is going to be such a big feat you know but it's not even her family's native language so i think that there's something definitely to be said about celebrating the diversity of regionalism within the philippines without becoming too you know, like without making it a divisive thing, I guess. But yeah. Yeah. I'm just taking in like everything you're sharing, Paulette. And I think we need to ask your dad if you're like related to my dad in a way, because my dad's also from Zambales and, <gasps> and my parents met in, in Alangapo City. My, my mom's from Bulacan. And so technically, I'm supposed to know three dialects, right? Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to know Ilocano. I'm supposed to know Kapong Pangong. I think I pronounced that correctly. And I'm supposed to know Tagalog. And I know none of them, but I did it deliberately. It's a whole, I have a whole story about it. A part of it was just because I, I experienced a lot of disconnect from my family that I felt like I needed to like, I needed to continue to, to create that distance. So that's my own personal life choice and whole conversation for another time. But, you know, it's like in hearing you talk, I feel like, I think the word that's coming to me is like conflicted. Like I hear that, you know, it's like throughout the years of being involved in the Filipino community, there's always been like a mix of like, oh, we got to unite, but oh, you're from a different region, but oh, we got to, you know, it's, it's always like kind of this back and forth of like, should we get along? And it actually gets me to think about like when we had Rachel Hernandez on in the last episode, episode 135, where she comes from old money in the Philippines. And, you know, she had mentioned like how, like she mentioned on the show, she's like, do you guys hate me? Do you guys hate me because you know about my past? And we're just like, well, I mean, I don't know how to hate you uh, other than just say thank you for sharing your story. And and she well, even mentioned to me her past like, also. It's not her fault. She didn't ask to be born into that family. And she, you know, went into great detail about how she was um in conflict, you know, conflicted, yeah. as you said, with them for the longest time until she was able to distance herself enough to find a way to be in healthy relationship with them. But we are never gonna fault you for where you come from or who you are. Yeah. We are just eager to learn, you know, we're not yeah. here to judge. And I think she was saying that if her dad were there, that he would say she can't be friends with you because with <laughs> Jen, dark because skin. she's dark skinned <laughs> and she couldn't be friends with me because I'm 
a communist because I'm part <laughs> Russian and mixed with Russian. Yeah, <laughs> we're like, wait, what? We were just like, okay. So right. we, I think her point was that, you know, her family's background is very rooted in that like colonialism very much. Yeah. So even to this day as an adult with her own kids, you know, her parents are still very much rooted in that. And I think it creates a lot of our, our parents are our parents, our grandparents, whoever the generations in our households are, or in our families that come before us are, you know, that, that is a conflict that I think um, comes up as a theme a lot on the TIFA project is how to have yeah. those conversations. And, you know, with Filipinos just naturally are so lighthearted and like, you know, when, when we talk about serious stuff, so it's like, you know, how can we maintain that to like, create a safe environment where people feel open to, you know, sharing their feelings and also open to listening to others, but not kind of stepping on anyone's toes. It's like a very fine line to walk through, I think. I appreciate you saying that, Nani, because it just gets me to think about how appreciative I am that we created, you know, we have the show and everyone has had the willingness to come forward and just share their story. You and I talk extensively, and I know a lot of our listeners can relate to this, where we were in spaces where it was of Filipino descent, you know, Filipino communities, and we felt alienated in our own communities. And, you know, I think kind of the response to that is it's complicated. We know it's complicated. But to have a space that we have today, like here and having this candid conversation and, you know, all having our ancestry from different places in the Philippines, but ultimately the motherland being the Philippines. It's really beautiful. I find this conversation very beautiful is what I'm saying. And even if there's a million questions and the more questions, the more answers we have, the more questions we have, really, it's nice to do this together. You know, just like what Suki had mentioned, like early on, it's like, you know, we may not have the words, but in community, we're going to find the words. We're going to find our language. We're going to find our verbiage to, you know, to really embrace who we are individually and who we are collectively. Yeah. So that's my thoughts. I really like to like what you guys both said, like. It's so hard because like when I meet like other Filipinos, I kind of like hold back because like I I'm like sometimes met with microaggressions or like, oh, you're too like fat or like, oh, you like got a little bit darker. And it's like, well, like, like that's not even like that's so classist and that's so colorist and that's so like why are they so like focused with like what I think that's something that drew me back as well with like learning the culture a little well, like early on before I like got into like a got deeper into it. And, like, my dad, like, the regionalism part, like, when I was, like, listening to, like, one of your previous episodes with, like, I think it was with Alessandra, like, she was talking about, like, how her, like, her mom or her dad was, like, Kapampangan and then her mom's Tagalog and I was, like, and then she, like, mentioned how there's stereotypes with the Ilocanos and I was, like, that's, like, the stereotype that, like, I see with my dad, even though he's, like, he also has roots in Ilocos and I was, like, that's wild, like, when I like started listening to your podcast, your guys' podcast, that's when I really like learned like, hey, we are all, we're all the same. Why am I going to like divide us based on like, because I used to like carry that sentiment with my dad because he also, because there's like a saying where it's like, oh, if you're from the Ilocos, you support like Marcos or you're just like really behind. But it's like, that's not true at all because a lot of like the literature and like the history is also like really, the Ilocos is really integral with that but it's like really washed away because of like the political biases and like the landscape in the philippines right now but it's like that's not true at all and like through like you guys i learned like oh i should not like that's not like normal but yeah and like i'm still trying to like get my dad to like hey it's not just like a like an ilocano thing because my mom's ilocano so it's like like you need to like learn this is like a classist issue and yeah yeah, I think that's the theme that we're circling in this conversation is um, classism in the Philippines and how just like it's such a plague. You know what I mean? It plagues our community. It plagues our culture like here, over there, everywhere. It's that that crab mentality. That's where that comes from, which we also talk a lot about on the Tifa Project. Yeah, real quick, I want to give a shout out to Alessandra Rivera, who you were referring to, Paulette. Her episode is 113. Through you guys, I found the language. Oh, perfect. Yeah, I found the language. The cycle can end with me. Using intimate activism to redefine the meaning of strength with Alessandra Rivera. So shout out to Alessandra. Wow, that was like almost a year ago when we last interviewed her. So that's, we'll have to check in with her. Wow. So Paulette, let me just go ahead and turn it over to you here as we start to wrap up. It's interesting how you said earlier that like, oh my gosh, 
um, you know, I feel like I'm wasting a lot of time studying all of this, or I feel like I'm wasting time, like going down this rabbit hole. And sort of when I think about you describing that, that kind of makes me think of like, when I watch, let's say, Keeping Up with the Kardashians, and then I want to like, you know, go do a Google search of all their drama and stuff like that. But in reality, I want to like, commend you because what you think is quote unquote, a waste of time is like so valuable to us in yeah. our community. Yeah. And so I just want to just say thank you for that, first and foremost. Yeah, I mean, I think that there's just not enough time in the day to talk about this topic because there's so much that goes into it. You know, there's yeah. the lack of accessibility to resources. There's the lack of general interest that like, you know, Filipino Americans have in learning this in the first place until it affects you personally or until there's something that like kind of hooks you into the topic. And even then, it's just such an uphill battle to learn about this stuff. Like, I would love to get into the more kind of nitty gritty details of the two posts that we've done on, on bias. Well, I know that we are working with limited time now that we've been just bantering back and forth for so long, but yeah, again, if you guys have not seen that resource that we dropped on the candidate overview, we have a lot of listeners that have reached out to us in the past who have like dual citizenship, which means that people are hungry for this information and without it, how do you make an informed decision on on voting, you know, and that's not just something that you want to let pass, especially with, you know, given the level of corruption that we've been talking about this entire time in the Philippines, it's really important, you know, if you can to play your part and do it in an informed way. So yeah, again, where you think that you're just like, falling down the rabbit hole, or maybe wasting your time that could be used on homework or other things that you need to get done, you just having this knowledge in the first place is yeah, you're, you're sitting on a gem essentially. And for you to choose to share it with us in whatever capacity, whether it continue to be, uh, you know, on our biasboba.com posts, or if you share it verbally in interviews here, I think this is information that people are hungry. They're looking for it. They want to know about the stuff, just like Suki was saying in the chat earlier, where are the resources where I can actually learn about how the, you know, history of corruption in the Philippines relates to what's going on today. Like, how can I start looking at the news and what's going on in the Philippines in a way where I can see things from a more, you know, just thorough perspective, I guess. And you are one of, you know, a handful of resources, again, where we can get that information from. So yeah, we're just continuing. I'm ready to soak up whatever it is you have to share <laughs> in addition to this. And on top of that, I am particularly interested in you and your dad's relationship, you know, and like what those conversations are like around your dinner table and what your approach with him is, you know, if he, if or when he gets defensive or, you know, combative or any of those things that we've experienced with our parents or grandparents, aunties, uncles, et cetera, who we tried to have these conversations with. Oh my God. Oh yeah. Oh my God. I'll make sure to like share the blogs. They're so, it's so crazy. Like, I don't know if like some of your family members like watch like a lot of like Philippine media, but like some, there's like a lot of discourse lately about like Filipino representation in media, especially in the United States and back home, because a lot of it is very westernized. And like, I feel like one of the reasons why it is, it's because like all of the Philippine oligarchs aren't essentially like Austronesian or like they aren't like brown like us. And a lot of that's just like one of the things. But also it's like it's crazy how everything's just like intertwined and how like they've sustained this like model. And like, I think there's like definitely a disconnect because they don't want us to know about like, like they're like, like all of this hidden power about like all of their accumulated wealth and hopefully, but thank you for like acknowledging like that. Like I feel validated with that. Cause usually the person that tells me like <laughs> I'm doing, spending too much time on like Facebook's finding out who's related to who is like my dad. <laughs> so hopefully I'll be able to like, like talk to him more about it, but he's also like, one of like the people or he's like the person that helps or that inspires me to like like read more about it because it's just like it's so heavily like this system is so like in the philippines and like what we have to face in like the diaspora is so like heavily corrupt and so intertwined and like that like all of our experiences are like it's kind of like a result of how of like people who did take advantage of it and like i don't know hopefully i'm like gonna be able to 
like bridge that in like the next newsletters. If you read the next one or like the one that I sent you, I went into like a face. I went on to Facebook and I went on to like all these like little niche articles. They're so it's so crazy. Oh my god, I love that. Thank you for doing that. That's like really, really. I I want to make sure that I have the time to like actually sit down and put in the time to edit and post that one. So it's not going to be in this week's newsletter, <laughs> but probably next week and. Yeah, again, we are all so hungry to know about this. And I think that in our conversations offline, you've already shared some really, really interesting facts. Like, didn't you tell us like Marcos's first wife is living over here next to my dad in Antioch or something? <laughs> oh, one of the people he allegedly had an affair with, like lived here because of because of her sisters, like so her through her brother in law, she lived in Antioch. She Yeah. Yeah. Well, I don't have to like, I don't know. If, yeah. Like, you know, it's just, to, but like, yeah, they, she lived here because of her in-laws and like, but there's like a rumor that she had an affair with Marcos and then she had a child and it's a Filipino politician who's Grace Poe. But yeah, I don't know if that's true. Right. Like, it was just like, those little things but see <laughs> you have all the chismis like the, the dirty gotta have chismis. her own show <laughs> i know seriously you have, have all the chismis like the dirty chismis that you can only get by doing facebook searches on these people like who's doing that no one <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I want to go ahead as we start to wrap up here to bring in one or two of our audience members. Jeremy, we had lost touch with him for a quick second here, but Jeremy, come back in. And I know you had something you want to share with us and with Paulette. Let me say the word to begin, just because after Paulette kept speaking, things kept popping in my head. Obviously, the Filipina TMZ, <laughs> you know, but kind of like educational and, you know, you know, and then you could also do that from a like a U.S. pop culture standpoint, right? Because I think. Jen, we mentioned it in our voice memo, right? Like not cultural appropriation, but cultural appreciation, right? But then also showing the people that are being the culture vultures, aka, you know, the Kardashian family, right? Like, no lie, if you take a look at the pictures of who her dad is, it's very confusing. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know if it's OJ or if it's Robert, because it literally oh, could boy. be either <laughs> Google. That's some chismis that. for you. That's Google, some chismis. Google dot com that, and y'all tell me. You know, I'm I'm not. And again, like I like the way that Paulette said it. She's like, I'm not confirming this. It might not be true, right? Like I'm not confirming it with OJ and like Robert. But y'all make the decision yourself. You know. But like what I'm saying is that that would be crazy if Paulette wanted to go that route, like doing Filipina TMZ, and also like uh, here's the chishness of the things that y'all are paying attention to in your oh, own man. community. We're so we're so happy to have Paulette. Or Paulette, I'm, I'm talking as if you're not <laughs> yeah. even here. Paulette, we're so happy to have you. You know, um, as an intern, because really, and and if you need this validation, like we are so happy to have you. We're so happy that you're doing all this work and going down all these rabbit holes to share on the show. And we hope that you continue to share, you know, all this time you invest in studying, you know, all these people in the Philippines, you know, with us on biasboba.com and with our newsletter community. So, so we praise you <laughs> and, and we appreciate you. Yeah. But that's also like, I mean, I don't want to minimize everything else you talked about, right? Like that's your own chismis if you wanted to do that, right? But it's like, also you've been educating us so much about everything that's happening in Philippines, you know, and it, this is crazy, right? Like that's next month. And to think that like, we're just watching here and don't really, and this is an influence, you know, but then Paulette, you also said something about like with your dad is what I've learned is you can't, you can't yell at them, right? You can't be like, why aren't you doing this? As, as long as you just keep doing what you're doing and just do it so that they're paying attention, they're going to start picking it up too. Cause that's what I do with like my mom is, you know, they weren't recycling. So I started putting stuff in a certain area. Then they started doing it. My mom like lights incense every single day. She's like, and my dad just complains, you know? And so it's like, yeah, it's like you're doing all the right things is what I guess I'm saying. And it's like, what I've learned is the reason that I do talk about women and girls, like, and the importance of mentorship and education of them is, I don't know what it is, but y'all learn so much quicker than men. You know, y'all do because like you are so young and or all of y'all are younger than me and the amount of knowledge that comes from y'all, right? What I'm learning from y'all is how to be an emotional person, 
And it's still a challenge every day. And I cry every single day with Jen, like a message. I just sent you one that's like six, seven minutes long of me crying. <laughs> I have to follow up no, on that. I do, I, I do know. <laughs> I do know now, Suki, but you are younger than I am, I think. <laughs> No, Suki is in her. Th- we're in the thirties, yo. Like we're. But I'm th- <laughs> wait, I'm thirty six. Okay, I'm thirty four. I'm Suki thirty. Is- <laughs> Since we're going around the table, the table. <laughs> no, you don't have to share your age. No, nobody has to share their age if you don't want to. We were just joking. Wait, Nani, I thought you're turning thirty this year. Aren't you turning thirty? Uh, no, did you turn 30 I already, already <gasps> did it. I know. Oh my god, I know. I feel it awful. was supposed to be. I, it I was like supposed I to be like a big thing, and I just I didn't have time for it. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, got yeah, it, yeah. Got it. We'll celebrate. Not this yeah, year. I'll see. Either, I'll see but... you in. Oh, okay. <laughs> Eventually, eventually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eventually, like I will years- celebrate the fact that I turned 30, but it <laughs> happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. When you turn 40, we'll celebrate that you turned 30. <laughs> there you go. There you go. We'll pick yeah, up for it. it then. <laughs> Any other final thoughts, Jeremy? Because I want to go ahead and have Suki share a word as well. Yeah, just, you know, gracious. And thank you for that episode. Cool. Awesome. Suki, come back in. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Paulette. Thank you so much again for being here because this is something that not a lot of people seem interested in or know enough about the, this field of history and politics. It's so complex and so intimidating. And you're empowering us to gain the knowledge of how to defeat you know, capitalism and corruption and white supremacy <laughs> and colonialism, et cetera. So like, don't think this is some random hobby that you shouldn't be burying yourself in, like bury yourself in it, bury us in there with you. Because, yes. like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because we're in this together. And like, like you have such a really like, I wish I could just put all that information in my head about politics, but it's just like, it's not my forte. It's your forte. And it's rare to find someone to have that courage and that, well, that determination. And of course, the intellect to to know all of this. So like, please, like, don't think that this is just some hobby. This is pure power. And I'm really glad that you're sharing this with us. And I hope that we can have access to it somehow, which is what's great about this platform and Discord and and Spotify and podcasts that you that people like you who may not have had a means to share this with people who also may not have a means of accessing this information. Like that's what's so great about all this connecting. Like now people are going to be able to learn more because of you being on this platform and this platform, this, this platform. So thank you all, like all of you and Paulette, like for being here because I'm learning a lot just from like contacting Jen and Nani going, hey, like I like your podcast. Yeah, just by joining the Discord or actually emailing us first and then joining the Discord. Yeah, yes. look where we are now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, yeah so love I love it. What we're trying to all say, Paulette, is I like that quote, Suki. It's not just a hobby, that's pure power. You know, that's a good title for this episode, if I had to choose one. (laughs) I noted. (laughs) But yeah, I think that that should be your main takeaway from from this conversation. It's like, this is really, really impactful for a lot of people. And again, a lot of people are so hungry for this information that you collect just for fun, you know? So I would capitalize on that for lack of a better word. (laughs) And I would like to ask you one bonus question before we go. Anyone who has tapped in to what's going on on the 2022 Philippine presidential election knows that Manny Pacquiao is running for president. Can you just give us your thoughts on that or tell it? I think that for me, I'm just, when I hear that, I'm like, how am I supposed to feel about that? You know, (laughs) what are your thoughts? My goodness. I was like surprised like several like years back when I when my dad was talking about how he's like a senator and I was like he's a senator and then I was so surprised but, like I told my cousin like oh yeah Manny Pacquiao is running and she's like what experience does he have and it's like I think with like he's not like Brayden and Marcos but it's like you know has like narrative of like becoming a boxer where it's like he like grew up in poverty and then he became something and he's like internationally known. The underdog. Yeah. yeah. I mm-hmm. feel like that's what like prompted him to like run for president. And and that's like a lot like a common theme in the Philippines. Like a lot of 
like public figures, a lot of celebrities tend to want to run for public office. But it's yeah, like, hello, Donald Trump. <laughs> I mean, do we not see a direct like <laughs> correlation there or even with a uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger becoming the, I know this was like years and years and years ago, but the governor of like California or something. And everyone was like, do you actually know anything about politics or, (laughs) you know what I mean? (laughs) Are you just using your, your story and your kind of position in, you, you kind of have a leg into a position of power already. And you're trying to step full force into that. But it's like, why, why should anyone actually vote for you? I know that's the like frustrating thing about it. Like it's an abuse of power and they're taking advantage of it, even though they try to use a narrative where it's like, I'm one of you, but it's like, are you really? And it's like, uh, then why are you fit to lead? <laughs> yeah. I'm not Thank you to- for. <laughs> no, no, me neither. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever votes for him, like that's your prerogative. That's cool. But I was just, yeah, I just wanted to try and pull some Christmas out of you before we let you go. <laughs> All right. Well, wow, Paulette, what a amazing, engaged conversation today. I almost want to like have more of these interviews in the future, Nani, where we do have an audience because it's like. I mean, personally, it, it gives me a break from asking a lot of the questions. So no, I honestly, just, I'm yeah. liking this kind of like group conversation style even a lot better than like the written things that we've been doing, which I know is also creating a lot more work for you, Paulette, to actually have to like, you know, put a document together. And like I said, in the beginning of your internship with us, if there's ever a way that we can make it easier for you, because the goal is not to create more work, it's to find something that you really enjoy that our community can benefit from. And if it's easier to have conversations like this and just talk about what it is you've been looking up on Facebook or learning this week or, you know, a new resource that you found, then we can always set that up as well instead of the written summary. So yeah, for both Paulette, if that's easier for you, plus um, whoever's listening to this right now, if it's easier for you to consume information this way, again, just provide that feedback for us and we can, we can pivot. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Paulette, let our listeners know if they do want to get a hold of you, how can they find you? Hmm. I'm not, my Instagram's not public, but you can request to follow me. My username is my name, Paulette Imperial. And then you can email me through my emails, imperialpaulette at gmail.com. And you can add me on LinkedIn as well. (laughs) There we go. There we go. Plug yourself. (laughs) (laughs) yes absolutely well i want to also thank suki jeremy and clarissa for joining us today this was a really fun first time experience to have an audience while we're interviewing a guest and paulette i think i told you last minute before we were going to record that we were going to have an audience so thank you for being open (laughs) to that (laughs) surprise but thank you for being open to that and of course nani and hero thank you for co-hosting with me as always Yes, you're welcome. Our pleasure as always. Well, mine, I don't know about his. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. And of course, to our listeners, you know, as of right now, we have a free Discord community. Actually, a lot of our audience is from our community. It's poppin'. We'd love to have you on there. Just check out the show notes of this episode. Also, like we mentioned, there's so many ways you can get a hold of us. You can be part of our newsletter in which you can sign up in the show notes as well. Paulette is involved with that newsletter, as we mentioned. And to get like kind of the long form of what she writes, we have it on biasboba.com. Speaking of biasboba.com, this show is possible because of all of our supporters on biasboba.com. Can't thank you all enough. And if you want to continue to see this show thrive, we would love your support there, whether it's buying us one, two, three, five, 20 cups of boba or becoming a member. If you do become a member on biasboba.com, you get access to our private podcast show, Chismas with Jen and Ani, in which we actually all did a warm up episode in Chismas with Jen and Ani with our audience before we actually did a live recording here. So you'll get a chance to learn a little bit about our audience members if you choose to become a member on biasboba.com and subscribe to Chismas with Jen and Ani. With that said, thank you all so much for joining us. We love and appreciate you all. Happy AAPI Heritage Month. And we'll chat with you in the next episode. Tune in next time. We love you. Bye. Mm-hmm.